Hello everyone and welcome to the Ask Barry V Show. I'm Barry Vanover. This is Miles Baker and as you can tell today is Ugly Sweater Day at the Ask Barry V Show. And Mr. Baker, you overdid yourself, I man. I do. I think it's pretty nice. It's a good look. You went, I might keep it after Christmas, actually. You went above and beyond on that <laughs> sweater for sure. Hey guys, our show today is brought to you by Studio Pro management software for the martial arts industry, a true software that was designed for martial artists by martial artists. So if you haven't got a chance to see, I encourage you to go to yourstudiopro.com, schedule a tour of our software and see what you are missing. All right, let's go to our first question today. All right, so first question for this week is from Alex C. Alex C. asks, uh, I feel I am very proactive on Facebook, but I get little to no results when I'm advertising. Uh, any tips you may have to get any help? You know, first, what was his name? Alex. All right, first, Alex. Facebook is really not useful, and it's really not doesn't work great for direct sales. And I think most of your es experts, the people that we train with, say the same thing. Direct sales is not what its purpose is. It's not. It's not great at that. What the purpose of your Facebook should be is to build a loyal following of people. That, are in, that engage with you so you can have the chance to show them that you're an expert in your field and that you will have the opportunity to engage with them. Okay. Now, what I mean by engage, there's three ways of engaging on Facebook, as most of you know, and that's when they like you, they, they, they like your post, they share your post, or they click your post. Now, let's talk about likes and let's talk about shares. A couple easy things that's, that's, that people like uh, uh, so that they'll share your post or they click the like button is videos. People like funny videos, educational videos, uh, informational videos, interesting videos, and they'll share those with other people and they'll like those. Another thing is people like quotes. Because when you put up a quote or you put up an image of something, a picture, that they either identify with or they agree with that saying or that quote or that image or that picture, because they identify with it, they're more apt to like it. Or if they really identify with it, they're more apt to share it, to put it up on their newsfeed as well. Anytime that someone starts liking your post on Facebook, they're going to see more of your post. And you can think about that in your own Facebook feed. Think about someone that you used to see on your Facebook that you don't see in, anymore. Go back and find their page and like a few of their pictures and see if you don't start seeing them popping up in your news feeds. So the likes and the shares are very important for Facebook, uh, for you to for people to share and to virally grow your, your audience. The next thing is for people, the third thing is to get people to click on the engagement, is to click your ad, your page, your, your post, so to speak. So when they click that post, there's a couple things that people really like to click on something to view. And they like to view tips and reasons, like the five top tips of fitness for the new year, or three reasons why parents, mothers love uh, martial arts for their kids. They Those are easy to read. They're usually quick. They're informational. It's free content that parents, people, uh, find valuable and interesting. Now that's when, when they click, that's their opportunity to do what Facebook is really designed for as far as marketing, is for us to have the opportunity. We've engaged them, now we have the opportunity to gather their lead. Now, this can be mandatory in order for them to see the information, or this can be voluntary. I, I, I think voluntary is the way to go. They don't have to give you their lead information to see the post. But if they want to subscribe to your newsletter or they want more information, they can put in their name and email or something to that effect, right? Now, there is where Facebook comes in is gathering the lead. It's a great lead generation source. Just remember on Facebook or social media, you have the opportunity to win people over, to, be, to engage with them, to convince them you're the ne an expert in your particular field and to gather their lead information. And once you get their lead information, that's where we're going to sell the people by email marketing and autoresponder systems to then we can direct engage them in some type of selling procedures. So if you're putting up a lot of ads where you're trying to get people to break out their credit card and pay for something on Facebook, it doesn't work very well and I, most people will con contest to that. So just think of Facebook as I'm trying to get as many followers, as many fans, as many friends as possible. I'm going to uh, uh, give them free, valuable content that's interesting 
and I'm going to try to gather their lead as well with those three types of engagements. You're kind of seen as the expert, and when they are ready to, to look for something, martial arts or fitness oriented were the first that come to mind. Right, because you you put yourself out there. That mom has seen you out there mm -hmm. for premier martial arts. When and I'm not saying we don't influence their decision by the information we put out for free. Of course we do. Mm -hmm. But when they're ready to purchase, we're going to be the ones they remember. We're going to be the experts in the field. Yeah, and I think that's that's exactly right. Like you were saying, the shares, the more valuable the content, the more sharing there's going to be. And it kind of goes with that whole concept of social currency, right? Where uh, I feel like I have something valuable to share with somebody else. Now, I may very well have just shared it, literally shared it on Facebook from someone else, but I'm more likely to share those things for my friends or my followers on my Facebook to see because it's valuable and it gives me value as a person, uh, this whole social currency concept. So. Some, of the, some of the most popular posts that I've used that people have, have shared, and, and we have a lot of different social media with Martial Arts Management Group, with, my, with personally, with this show, with their schools, and so forth, is also share some of your personal life with people. You know, I know that my on my Barry Vanover's Martial Arts Management Group page, I'll put pictures of my kids and tons of people will like them and that's just keeping them engaged, right? Yeah. I don't do it too much, but I will do it on occasion. Um, I guess be careful a little bit about two things that you should be careful about anyway mm -hmm. is politics and religion. Mm -hmm. We don't want to offend anybody, but uh, putting information up there that gives people a chance to uh, like what you do, agree with what you do, and they find interesting and fun. And as for martial artists, don't be don't be scared to be funny, right? right. People have a sense of humor. Let's play upon that, you know, and they appreciate that. Don't be always so serious, yeah, you know. Absolutely. Very nice. So our second question for this week, uh, Hayden M. asked. Uh, she said, "You discuss a lot of great marketing ideas for targeting kids. Uh, do you have any specific concepts for targeting adults as well?" You know, our marketing plan for kids and adults market is absolutely no different other than we're conscious of where our market is. If I'm going for kids, then I'm finding that where in our community and where in our market the kids are and the mothers are. If I'm going for the adults, I'm doing the same marketing systems, promotional booths, email marketing, uh, you know, the rack cards, uh, seminars, mass intros, all the same type of things we do for kids, we do for adults. Uh, I would only say to make sure that you have adult marketing specific materials. If you're at a promotional booth uh, and you're going to go for adults, then naturally, you know, going to a place where it's an adult event makes common sense. But make sure you have adult marketing materials to hand out. Or conversely, if you're at a promotional booth where there's adults and kids and families, have materials that you can give out for the adults when they come around to your booth and then the proper ones for the kids as well. So we don't deviate from our nine of nine, nine important marketing actions that we do 90% of the time. We don't deviate from those. We just change location and target market for adults instead of kids. But the marketing ideas are exactly the same. Very nice. Uh, our next question for this week is from uh, Sean R. He asks, uh, what is one of the fastest ways to grow your billing check? Well, there's three ways to, to, to make more money, mm -hmm. to grow your business, that's to get more students, okay? Get your students to pay more, get mm -hmm. your students to pay more often. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking billing check, here's an owner that probably makes most of his money from his monthly tuition billing, because mm -hmm. he didn't ask me, what's the, what's, what is the one way I can make more money, money or I can generally. grow my gross revenue? He asked me, what is the one way I can grow my billing check? Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing to him, to him is his billing check. Yeah. So it probably tells me that he lives and dies by the amount of his accounts receivables or those monthly student payments. And if that's the case, I want to help you, but I can help you by teaching you the, the four other income generators of a martial arts school, if you would like to, to contact us at our office. But going back to his billing check, you know, grow your billing check. Your billing check is directly proportional to the number of students you have. You gotta get more students. Mm -hmm. And the fastest way to get more students, honestly, is mass intros. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Jason Solis is a, is a oh, client yeah. of ours yeah. in a premier martial arts school. Last Saturday, he signed up 17 new students mm -hmm. in an hour and a half at his martial arts school with his mass intros. More than some schools a whole month. Right? More, yeah. A lot more in than December, some schools a whole month December. in December. Yeah. He signed up 17 in yeah. one, one day, yeah. one hour from his mass intros. Um, uh, John Lyles in, in, in Lubbock, Texas, <coughs> excuse me, 
I had 63 people at his mass intro recently. Wow. Right? That's, that's I'm not, I don't remember how many signed up. I think it was in the 30s. Mm -hmm. But yeah. he had 60 show up. Wow. I was on the phone today in one of our focus group sessions. And uh, Tim Rook is mm -hmm. another client of ours. And he had 12 people show up Saturday at his mass mm -hmm. intro and signed up six. Yeah. So <clears throat> embracing mass intros and that type of marketing for that event. Now, mass intros doesn't replace your normal two lesson trial program. It's like the icing on the cake. It's like two types of fishing. Your two lesson trial programs, uh, your, where you're gathering leads, making phone calls, scheduling appointments, that's fishing with a line. We're getting one big fish after another. Mass Intros is like fishing with a big net. We're doing a certain type of marketing because we can't get their lead and contact information that invites them back to our school uh, uh, to an event and then thus our mass intro procedures. So to me, that's the fastest way to grow your student body, therefore grow your billing, billing check. check. Very nice. uh, last question for this week is uh, Joey C asks, what is one of the biggest mistakes you see martial arts owners make? Oh, Biggest mistake we see often. Biggest mistake we see martial arts school owners make. Um, I guess the broad answer to that, I mean, I could get really detailed, but so many martial arts school owners worry too much about their martial arts and not enough about their business mm -hmm. of the martial arts. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I could think over and over when I meet a new client and the first thing they want to work on is what they want to look at curriculum or they want to look at leadership programs. They want to look at what kind of weapons videos do you have for us and all this. And I'm like, that's not going to make you any more money. Mm -hmm. You know, they're yeah. worried too much about the martial arts. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying martial arts is not important. Of course, it's of course important. It's what we do. Right. right? It's yeah. what, this is what we do. Yeah. It's how we make our living. Yeah. But you got to be worried about the business of martial arts. We're in the business of the marketing and sale of martial arts lessons. Teaching those lessons and the actual martial arts part is the job that our business has created for us. Or hopefully you get to the point that it's the job it's created for other people and you're not even having to teach every class every night. You're being able to go out, play golf, hang out, travel. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the, that's the lifestyle we want for all of our school owners is to be able to go in the school when they want to. Okay, but no wants and needs. I need to go in certain times. I want to go in certain times, but you don't have to be chained at your school if you're concentrating on the business of martial arts. Mm -hmm. So kind of fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, your martial arts skill level or accomplishments isn't always directly proportional to the success of your martial arts business. It's <laughs> so right? funny in that sweater, man. You can't take you're sitting there trying to be all serious <laughs> and you've got the... the the, uh, Santa, what is that? That's, I believe that's Miss that's Miss no, Claus. No, 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 no. Miss no, Claus no. outfit. <laughs> yeah. All right, what was the next one? Uh, that's it for this week. That's our four okay. questions. All right, listen. MartialArtsMarketing.com, they just let me know today that they are starting today through the end of the Aldo McGregor fight this Saturday night. They're doing. They're going to give away $1,000 of free marketing materials. And here's, here's how you're going to enter. You're going to go to Martial Arts Marketing uh, Facebook page, martialartsmarketing.com Facebook page. Now, I don't know if the post is up yet. Let's, let's say it's tomorrow or whenever you're seeing this. Sometime before the fight, go to their Facebook page and underneath that post where they announce the contest, you're going to do the following. You're going to pick, you got to pick all three things. You got to pick who's going to win the fight, what round the fight will end, and how the fight will end. Will it end in a submission? Will it end in a decision or will it end in a TKO? Who do you have? Who do you think's going to win? Oh, man. He caught me off that's guard there. One. That's a tough it one. It is a tough one. You know, that's a tough one. I can't, I can't even. <laughs> and I don't even know who I'm really for. Right. You know, the McGregor, you can't, you know, you like the energy, the excitement, but he's a little too much over the top. Yeah. But, the, but Aldo's been so silent and serious about yeah. the whole thing. I don't it's know. I'm just super see, excited. Sure. I'm super excited. <laughs> Put those three things in a post underneath the contest post at Martial Arts Marketing uh, Facebook page, all right? And the person that gets the closest, or if several people get the exact three answers correct, they will be put into a drawing, $1,000 of marketing materials from nice. martialartsmarketing.com. And it's on their Facebook page, okay? Nice. That's just fun to do. So go do it. And have a little fun with it, and maybe you win a thousand dollars to market your school. Now I could go on with another marketing lesson about this. Take the thousand dollars in the marketing materials. Call me or Mr. Baker. Let us ex tell you how to use which marketing materials to buy and exactly how to use them. And that thousand dollars of free marketing materials will turn into a hundred a hundred thousand dollars in profit this year, guaranteed. All right, that's it. Okay, if we don't talk to you guys, you, there's not another show before the holidays. Merry Christmas. <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> 